Hello, it looks like you're looking for math exam advice and you need it right now. Well, you've come to the right person. I've got a bachelor's in mathematics with a concentration in statistics and operations research, and I've got a master's in actuarial science, which is a fun way of saying insurance and financial mathematics. It's quite difficult. Now, I did manage to graduate in one of the top of my class. How did I do it? I've got some tips and tricks that I'm about to give to you so that you can pass all your math exams and, for the most part, graduate at the top of your class. Let's get started. Now, I've split this video up into three different sections. One, leading up to the exam. Two, the day before the exam. And three, doing the actual exam. So let's jump into it. The first thing you need to do is exercise. Point three, point two, point one. Almost on my set. Does that count as a math point? No, not that type of exercise. The only way to get better at anything is to practice. And with math, it's actually quite easy nowadays. At the end of a lesson, a teacher will assign you a certain amount of exercises, like two to 60 evens only, which is always really annoying because how am I supposed to look at the answers in the back of the book if you're gonna choose evens only? But the thing is, if you're having issues with certain parts of the lesson, just do more exercises and do the odds so you can check your answer. Now at this point I know you're like- Evan, she gave us like 30 questions. I have other homework. I know, I know, no one wants to do more work, but the thing is, the more work you do now, the less work you have to do later on the exam when you're able to just pull all these numbers out of your bucks. You're like, man, I'm so glad I exercised. What if I've done all this work and I've been doing it wrong? That thing you're pulling exercises from is more than just for exercises. It's a textbook. Read it. There's chapters and lessons that are going to help you with every exercise you're doing. And usually, in the lesson, there will be an example problem with a step-by-step -step solution for every type of problem you're going to see in the exercises. So my solution there, just read the book. I'm a math student. I hate reading. Okay, so you're a math student, you hate reading. I implore you to check out YouTube. Yes, this website you're in right now that you've probably clicked the like button on already. Conveniently located is a search bar. If you type in there any type of lesson you're having issues with, for the most part, you're gonna find a really good lesson of someone that's able to help you with that. Unless you're in real analysis or modern algebra or actuarial science or something, at that point, you're screwed. But other than that, calculus, statistics, probability, geometry, there will be a really good lesson. And if you want some of my recommendations for different teachers on YouTube, I'll put them in the description. And these people have helped me through some of my upper level classes, so I highly recommend them to you. We all know not all professors are the greatest. I mean, I remember I had a probability teacher that literally said, you take the probability of the distribution. Probability? The, the accents and sometimes the just bad English is a bit difficult to understand. And it's even worse when you're learning a really upper level math course. So the easiest solution to that is to just get some help online and you'll be set. Any other tips you have for preparation would be very welcome, thank you. If you're having issues with any exercise, even if you don't know what the answer is, use wolframalpha.com. Wolfram Alpha is amazing and it's basically the math major's not so secret secret. You can put in any problem for algebra or polynomials or anything with calculus and this website will give you a step-by-step -step solution to how to solve your problem. Even like ordinary differential equations and like Calc 3 and stuff, it's amazing. So it saved me on many occasions. I highly recommend you use it if you're trying to check your work. Don't just copy the answers word for word. Try and learn from them. My calc teacher always used to say, you can't build a good house on a shaky foundation. And I always used to make fun of her for it because it's such a lame expression she'd use all the time. But it's actually quite wise. And what she meant by that is, you can't just expect to be really good at calculus without knowing the basics of algebra. Like you can't go into calculus thinking you're going to get a passing grade if you can't even factor any polynomial expressions or anything. That's not good. You need to go back and take another course or at least learn the stuff that you're not that good at before you can expect to be good at the calculus because if you're not good at the basics, you're not going to be good at the advanced stuff. And my exam is tomorrow, what do I do? Okay, so all my preparation tips are a bit late and you've got an exam super soon. How can you ace it without having a clue what you're doing? I've got your back. It's the day before the exam and you have no clue what's going on. Don't worry, this is the most important day for studying. So even if you have nothing else done beforehand, this is the day you can make it all back up. Has your professor provided you the practice quiz? If he has, I just want you to get on your knees right now and thank the lords of math. Oh, thank you, Rene Descartes. You've helped me a new ton. New, new ton, no? <laughs> Having a practice quiz beforehand is the best way of acing an exam without having any clue what's going on. Because most likely the week before, the teacher will go over the practice quiz with you and you can 100% make sure you have all your answers right. The day before the exam, just keep doing the problems over and over and over until you have them all ridiculously memorized, you have every step in your head and you know how to do this practice quiz just like it's the real test. Well, guess what? A lot of times, it most likely is the real test. I've had a lot of lazy professors in my day, multiple occasions where they will literally just give you the practice quiz with some numbers changed. Easy A, I've aced so many tests and classes that way. So 100% memorize the freaking practice test and you will do fine on the test. And even if it's not just the same, 
because you're so good at the practice test and that's what it's going to be on, a lot of the questions are going to be very similar content and you're going to do well either way. So even if you never even showed up to class, but you got that practice quiz and you kind of understand the concepts, you are well sorted. And if you don't have a practice quiz, no worries, it's not the end of the world because all you have to do is take all your previous quizzes, courseworks, and tests and just do all those problems one by one until you're confident with them. And for the most part, that's what the teacher's going to have on the test, is mostly a summary of all the stuff you've already done. Evan, you know they'll throw in hard ones. Yes, we've all had those tests where you learn A plus B is C, and then the teacher goes, what's the capital of Jupiter? And you're like, wah. But the thing is, as long as you can get the basic stuff down, you'll still get a pretty good grade. And if you do understand the basics, you should be able to kind of put one and one together to get these hard questions. And then you'll find out the capital of Jupiter is actually just Mars. Also, why is that in a math course? Word problems. I'm arguing. <laughs> Next up for the day before the exam, cheat sheets. Every math exam I took in America allowed me to bring a cheat sheet with me. Now what is a cheat sheet you might ask? It's a sheet of paper about as small as an index card or as big as an 8x11 piece of paper where you can write anything you want to help you with the exam. You can write out step-by-step -step solutions, you can write theories, you can write theorems, anything you want. Now some people go a bit crazy with it and they write so small they need a magnifying glass look at the cheat sheet. That's not doing it right. That's spending way too much time trying to find things and less using it to help you as a reference. The best way to use a cheat sheet is to choose an example problem from every lesson you've learned or you're having trouble with and solve it step by step on your cheat sheet. Perfect. Also make sure to label them and highlight them so you can find them at quick notice. Like, oh no, I need a derivative. Whoop. There it is. Oh, that's how you do it. Chain rule. Done. Sorted. This does work for a lot of the applied mathematics. However, when it comes to courses like real analysis, this is the one that I had to make. Real analysis is mostly memorization of theorems and how to prove things. Imagine the hard part of geometry and the proofs, except on steroids. That's real analysis. It was difficult, but I'm very proud of that. It took me a long time. And by doing that, I was really, really good at real analysis and I got an A- minus in the course, even though I thought I was going to fail. The thing about cheat sheets is even if you're not allowed to have them, at this point in the video, you're sitting there like, practice quizzes? Cheat sheets? What is this? Even if you're not allowed to do a cheat sheet, I'm gonna give you some really good advice right now. Still make a cheat sheet. In any course you're doing, the day before you take the exam, just write out everything you think you'd want to know on the exam that you'd be able to bring with you. Pretend, if you're not allowed to do it, pretend you're able to bring the sheet with you. What you're doing there is cleaning out all the clutter in your head and putting down all the stuff that actually matters. Study that. And then when you go in to take the exam, that's gonna be super fresh in your mind. You'll know all the stuff you need to know and then boom, You've just aced another course. Evan, my exam is in an hour! What am I gonna do? And now it's time for the final part of the video, how to take your actual exam. My first piece of advice for taking a math exam is take your time, but also don't. You really need to be choosy on what problems you're going to spend the most time on. If you're going through the problems, you're doing well, and then you get to one that you're like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? Skip it, come back to it. Nothing is worse after taking a math exam than realizing that you couldn't answer some easy questions because you ran out of time. So do all the problems you're confident with first and then come back and do all the difficult ones. If you can leave this video with just one piece of advice, let it be this, show all your work. Sometimes professors are just looking for an excuse to give you more points to help you pass the class. Even if you have no clue how to solve this particular problem, but you know it involves like the chain rule in some way, write down the chain rule, write down what rule you should be using and then Try and use that rule. Try and write everything you know about that problem and you will most likely get a couple extra points. If you do this on every problem that you have issues with, that could be a big difference between a C plus and a B plus. Along that same thread, if you're working on a multi-tiered question like 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, and you know you got 1A wrong, but you know how easy 1B is, just take that wrong answer from 1A and put it through the rest of them. Because even though you're gonna have the wrong answer for all of them, you'll have the right work for them. And therefore the teacher most likely will give you a lot of extra points for that. And like I said, that's a big difference between a C and a B. Most likely during your math exam, you will come across the bane of a math major's existence, word problems. We don't like words, we like numbers. That's why we're math majors. So if you wanna know why Sally has hundred apples, don't worry, she's an idiot. I don't know why she has 100 apples either, but that doesn't really matter. That's just there to confuse you. What you wanna do with the word problem is read through the whole thing the first time, understand what they're asking for and what mathematical equation they're probably gonna go for, and then go back to the top and pull out every little piece of information you can that's important for the equation. Extrapolate all the numbers. Susie has how many apples? How many people are gonna eat these apples? How many hours are they gonna eat these? Done. Pull all that out step by step. Don't pretend you're Isaac Newton. Ooh, look at me, I have all the numbers in my head. No, 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 no. Write them all out, get it out of the evil word problem, and then throw the words away. Now at this point, you should be able to do the math and show that you know what you're doing. And if all else fails, it'll help you sleep at night to know that for the most part, unless you have a very technical career path, you're not really gonna have to use this ever again. So guess what? You can forget everything you just learned. I've walked out of exams before going, yay, I never have to think about this ever again, which is funny in a way, but you're free. 
Go watch some YouTube videos. Go subscribe to mine. I make new videos every Sunday that'll make you laugh. And also, if you liked this video and you think it helped you, give it a big thumbs up below for me. Thanks. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this did help you, and I wish you great luck with your exams. I'm going to Peru, so I'll see you there. Goodbye. Well, you've come to the right person. I've got a degree in your mom. That's right. I've studied all those curves. I've integrated all over. I'm sorry. I guess I just don't know my limits with these jobs. <laughs>